Okay, hello, class, and I'm getting my thing set up here. There we go. So for um, this particular section, 14.1, we are going to um, talk about a lot of integration problems. So um, let's see, this one is iterated integrals and area in the plane. So essentially what's happening is that we have to take the integral, but with respect to a specific um, variable, okay? So it can get a little messy or a little complicated, but for the most part, you just have to focus on which um, variable is acting like a constant, kind of like when you take the partial derivatives, and then which variable you're actually integrating, okay? So in this case, since I'm integrating with respect to y, that means that my um, x is like a constant, okay? And so I don't typically do this because I can, personally, I can decipher between which variable is actually considered a variable here and which one's not. But for those that are learning or just don't get it, um, you can keep rewriting this integral so that, um, you can start to identify it a little bit better. So for instance, for this integral, I could do this and separate the integral per term. Then I could um, go ahead and take this constant out because I'm x is a constant when we're integrating with respect to y and take this constant out. and then integrate what you have left. So the integral of dy is just y, and then I still have to evaluate it from zero to x. And then 18, the integral of y is y squared over two, and you evaluate it from zero to x. Um, and this was a bounded integral, so I do not need to put my plus c, okay? Do not put the plus c ever if you do have bounds. It's when it's a... Um, an indefinite integral, meaning I don't have bounds when you have to put the plus C, okay? So, and then in this case, I would have X times X minus zero. Over here, I would have X squared over two minus uh, zero. So then I would get X squared plus nine X squared, which is 10 X squared, okay? And so then that's how you would get that answer. Now. If you are good at being able to decipher between the who's the variable and who's the um, constant, then you could just integrate this, and that's a constant multiplier. The integral of a constant is the constant times y plus 18 acts like a constant, and then the integral of y is y squared over 2 from 0 to x. This can simplify, giving me 9. So when I plug in x for y, I get um, x times x plus 9x squared. And when I plug in 0, I get x times 0 plus 9 times 0 squared. This is all just 0, so I end up with x squared plus 9x squared, which is 10x squared. And I do get the same exact answer. Okay, but you'll notice it might be a little bit less writing than having to separate everything so that you can see who the constant is and who the um, variable is, okay? So I won't necessarily do them like this all the time. However, if the problem does look really super complicated, I might have to break it up for myself just because I do that when things are too crazy to try to break it into uh, easier or smaller tasks, okay? So for instance here, I would definitely, definitely um, write this as one over X times Y. And so then the one over X is my constant multiplier and the integral of Y is Y squared over two. And so then I end up with one over X times x to the fourth squared over two minus x squared over two. 
and I end up with one over X times this. And then if I distribute my one over X, I get X to the seventh over two minus X over two. And this would be my final answer, okay? And I did not check the first one, so let me check it just to make sure it's all good. Okay, now let's check the second one. So we got a uh, fraction x to the seventh over two. Oops, that did not do what I wanted it to do. Minus x over two. Okay, we got our second check. So continuing on, of course, these things do get a little bit more complicated as we keep going. Um, zero. So again, my variable here is uh, y. So this x to the eighth is going to count as a, a constant multiplier. And the integral of y is y squared over 2 from 0 to this expression. So then when I plug in that expression, Right, applying the fundamental theorem of calculus. We do our upper boundary, then minus our lower boundary. Okay, so this square is gonna pop this off and that's all just the big fat zero. So we get x to the eighth times um, six minus x squared over two, which can be simplified into um, six x to the eighth over two minus x to the 10th over 2, which is 3x to the 8th minus x to the 10th over 2. So let's try to plug that in. Oh, x to the 10th. There we go. OK, we got our third check. So now we're going to move on to um, number four. Let's see what we get for this one. So we have x to the seventh square root of x. Oh gosh, I didn't need it to be that one. And then I am integrating x squared plus 8y to the seventh. Um, dy. So um, for the first time, x for the first term, x squared is the constant multiplier. And so we get y with our bounds. And then for the second term, the 8 is a constant multiplier and we get y over y to the 8th over 8, which means I really just have y to the 8th and then evaluate it at the bounds. So when I plug in my bounds, I get x squared times the square root of x minus x to the seventh. And here I get um, the square root of x to the eighth power minus x to the seventh to the eighth power. So remember, this is like a one half exponent. And the same thing here, it's like a one half exponent. So two plus one half is gonna give me five halves. And then two plus seven gives me nine. Um, here, one half times eight is x to the fourth. And then that'll be negative. And then this times this is to the 56 power. I think so anyway. I forget all my times tables. It's like the more calculus you learn, the less arithmetic you remember. Because you're like, I could just use my calculator. So and none of those are like terms. So this is a weird, but final answer. So I'm going to type x raised to the 5 over, oops, that's not 5, 5 over 2. Over 2. Why does it keep putting a double parentheses? There we go. Then minus x to the ninth plus 
x to the 4 minus x to the 56. So we'll see what we get. Okay, yay, we got another check mark. Now, number five. I'm going to switch my page. Oops, I didn't even get the camera. Okay. It's like oddly cold in my office. I don't know why. You can't see my arm, but <laughs> it just got just bumps everywhere. So let's see. This is weird bounds. So we've got the square root of six minus y to the eighth. And at the bottom, we have negative square root of six minus y to the eighth. And then I'm integrating x squared plus y to the eighth with respect to x this time. So now my variable focus is x. So when I integrate x squared, it's actually x cubed over three. Um, and I'm gonna put my bounds at the very, very end, which I am allowed to do. I just don't want to rewrite those ugly long bounds twice, uh, more than once. Okay, and then the integral of y to the eighth, that's just a constant multiplier. So I get y to the eighth times x. And so I guess I didn't need to scoot it over all the way over there. So to keep things nice and neat, I'm going to fix it. Okay, so now when I plug this in, I'm going to get, uh, for the first term, I'm going to get the square root of six minus y to the eighth cubed over three plus y to the eighth and the square root of six minus y to the eighth. And then minus, and now we're gonna plug in the negative. So we get negative square root of six minus y to the eighth cubed over three plus y to the eighth and then negative square root of six minus y to the eighth, all of that, okay? So let's see, um, that's going to give me six minus y to the eighth to the three halves exponent still over three this is going to give me positive y to the eighth times this. Um, here you're going to have a negative, three negatives, right? One, two, three. So that result will be negative. But then with this negative, it'll turn to positive. And since it'll be cubed, it's going to be six to the three halves over three. Now here, this will make this a negative, but then that negative will turn it to a positive. So what happens here is I have these two are like terms. So I have two of these things. And then here, they're also both like terms. So I have two of these things. And if it really, really, really bothers you, you can manipulate this, but I don't think I need to. I'm just gonna type in all of that is my answer, okay? Um, if you're real great at this, you can factor out a square root. And when I factor out a square root, um, you can even factor out the two, because they both have a two. Uh, what you do end up with is you end up with another one of these over three. And then over here, you just end up with the y to the eight. And so then this is two minus one third y to the eighth plus y to the eighth. You get two, two plus um, two thirds y to the eighth. You could factor out another two, which gives you four out here. And then you'd have one plus one third y to the eighth. And if you wanted to factor out the one third, you could but you'd get three and then y to the eighth. And so it doesn't really matter which version. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't see the rest of that. So I did factor out this common two and that two would get multiplied with the two that's already out there. So this would be one and then one third. And then if I factor out the one third, that's gonna turn the four into four thirds. 
And then one third times three will give me that one and one third times y to the eighth will give me the one third y to the eighth, okay? So either version of the answer should be accepted in your computer. Um, this just seems like a little bit less for me to um, type in. So that's usually the one I like to type in. Um, but if you're lazy, which I am too most of the time, no, no shame and no judgment. Um, it just depends on where you want to be lazy, right? Do you want to be lazy on typing it in or do you want to be lazy on the algebra, okay? Um, or which one are you better at? Because if you're better at um, just typing things in and not so great at the algebra, well, then you made your choice, right? You're going to type all that crazy stuff in. But if you're fantastic at algebra manipulation and you just don't want to be typing in all of this, um, you can manipulate it to help you. It's also not a bad idea to practice this algebra, but in our class nowadays, um, no matter what you type in the answer box, as long as it's equivalent to the correct answer, the computer is smart and it'll, it'll accept your answer. But way back in my day when I was taking these math classes, I didn't have a computer to tell me I was right or wrong. All I had was a solution manual, which was a book about this fat for the for our actual textbook, which was also about that fat. Um, and if I wanted to know if I got an answer right, I had to go look in that, that solution manual and it only has one answer in there. And if mine doesn't look like that, I would practice making mine look like that. Okay, and if I couldn't, then I knew my answer was wrong. So you can imagine the amount of time that was spent, wasted, however you wanna see, whatever your perspective is on that. Um, but it just took me a lot of time, which I guess isn't necessarily a bad thing because now I am a master algebra manipulator, right? Um, but it does take time. So you choose your route either way, the computer will be happy as long as you did the integration correctly. Okay, so here we're concentrating on X again. So this guy is like a constant multiplier. So when I do take my integral, this guy's just gonna be there, okay? Now I am gonna need to do some U substitution. So I'm gonna let U equal the sine of X and then DU would be um, the derivative of sine, which is cosine of x dx. And so then I'm going to rewrite this as um, dun, 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 dun. it's going to be u cubed dx. And so then when I do this, I don't change my bounds, I just back sub again later, okay? So when I do this, it's gonna be u to the fourth over four, and my bounds are for x, remember? So x equals y and x equals pi over two. Don't try to plug in the pi over two and the y for u, okay? Because that's the wrong variables. Some people, when they do the u substitution, they also change the variables in the same step using this relationship, right? So if you know x is this, then you plug it in there, and that's your new bound, sine of y. And if you know that x is 1 pi over 2, then you plug in pi over 2 there, and whatever that value is becomes your upper bound. And then after you've integrated with respect to you, you can just plug in the new bounds. I don't particularly do that because it takes more brain power for me to um, figure out what the new bounds are going to be versus me just putting the u in, doing the integration, and then putting back what u was. And then I can just plug in what was given to me, OK? So that's the route I usually take. But again, you already know at this level of mathematics, there are plenty of choices and plenty of routes that you can go into. Um, it is up to you which way you want to do it, OK? You do not have to do it exactly as I do, as long as you're following all of the rules of integration and algebra, okay? So let me clean this up here before I start plugging in these numbers. So I am going to have, I'm gonna take out this four. So I'm gonna have cosine of y over four, 
And then in here, I'm going to have sine of x to the fourth power. I'm leaving it like this because I am going to have to plug in these bounds. So I'm going to have um, sine of pi over 2 to the fourth power minus sine y to the fourth power. So then I'm going to end up with sine of pi over two. Pi over two is up here and the y value there is one. So I get one to the fourth power, which is just one. And then this would be sine of the fourth power y. And you can write the answer like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Or you can write the answer by distributing this in. I think I'm gonna leave it the way it is. and just change that to a parentheses, okay? So I'm gonna leave mine like this. So cosine of y over four parentheses one minus sin raised to the fourth, oops, that's not good, raised to the fourth, and in here we want to type in y. Okay, I think that looks like what I have on my paper. Oh, I did it something wrong. <laughs> Maybe it was my sign of one half. Let me check my calculator. Mode. And I need to be in radian mode. So sine of pi over two, no, is one, and one to the fourth part. Okay, I'm gonna push pause because it might be a quick thing, but just in case, I'm gonna pause the video and make sure I can find my error, and then I'll point it out. Okay, that only took me like two seconds from the very beginning. I realized that you can't integrate u with respect to x, right? So I, the biggest mistake I made was not replacing dx before I did my integration. So all of this is bad. Um, and instead of erasing it and trying to do it all over again, I'm just going, I mean, uh, just in, instead of erasing it, I'm just gonna start over, okay? So we're gonna try this again and I'm gonna do it correctly this time. Um, luckily, just looking at that first line, I realized what I had done wrong. So I wasn't wrong in doing this part. The part was good, okay? Where I was wrong was when I did my u substitution. I said that let u equal sine of x, and then du would be cosine of x dx. I have to replace everything that has an x in here, and I didn't do that when I did it the first time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for um, dx. And so now I'm, instead of writing dx, I'm going to write this. Okay. So this is what it will become. And this is where I messed up the last time because I didn't do it correctly. This will become u cubed. And then the dx will become du over um, cosine of x. Oh gosh, this is going to get complicated because. <laughs> this is not it. This is not going to work because don't I still have something in terms of x, right? So this isn't going to work. I have to remember from Cal 2, okay? From Cal 2, they showed us how to integrate when we had trig functions, okay? And the strategy was is that if this has an odd power, you have to break it up into a square and then a single. Okay, then you have to convert your square into cosines. So this would be one minus cosine squared x, and then you'd have the sine x dx. Now I can use my u substitution. So I will say let u equal one, I would just let u equal cosine of x. And then du would be negative 
sine of x dx. And I do have sine x dx, but if you don't, you just can, you can do this. How you do the substitution is up to you, okay? Um, but just make sure that after you substitute, you do have the same thing as me. So x is equal to y and x is equal to pi over two because I do not change my bounds. And then this becomes one minus u squared um, sine x. And then dx is du over negative sine x. So what happens? These guys will cancel, but you have a negative. And I'm just going to go ahead and distribute that negative to these two terms. Or you can just pull the negative out of the integral completely, right? You know you're going to have this negative there, but you can take that negative and just pull it out to the very, very front. And so then now you have a negative there, OK? I don't know what's going on, why my book keeps moving. And I apologize if I wasn't noticing on the screen. So I did u is this, du is this, tried to solve for dx. So then I knew what to plug in for dx, and that was du over negative sine x, right? And then um, these guys canceled, but the negative did not cancel. So the negative came out to the front. And I still have 1 minus u squared du on the inside. Okay, and so then if I integrate both of these with respect to u, I end up with negative cosine y um, and u minus u cubed over three. That did not mean to be a y, it's supposed to be a u. But my bounds are for x, not for u, right? Because I didn't change my bounds. If you do change your bounds, then you can plug in your new bounds right away. But for me, I have the back sub. So u was cosine of x. So this is cosine of x and then cosine of x cubed over 3. And now I can plug in my bounds for x. So I have negative cosine of y. And then cosine, I'm going to put a big bracket here. So cosine of pi over 2 minus cosine of pi over 2 cubed over 3 minus cosine of y minus cosine of y cubed over 3. And so what do I get here? Cosine of pi over 2, the cosine or the x value there is going to be um, 0. So this is 0 minus 0 cubed over 3, negative cosine y, negative and negative is positive, cosine cubed y over 3. And so then what happens? These go away. And then negative times a negative is cosine squared y. Negative times a positive is negative cosine to the fourth y over 3. And that, hopefully, is the correct answer. So let's see. Cosine squared of y minus fraction cosine to the fourth of y over three. Let's check it now. There we go. Now we got our check because we did it correctly. <laughs> um, but be careful, be careful with number six. Okay. So let's see, number seven. Number seven, ooh, now we get into our double integrals. Double, double. Reminds me of the, I forgot what it's called. Anyway, remind me of a gum commercial. 
way back when. Anyway, okay. So we do have to work, when we do double integrals, we do have to work from the inside out, right? So we definitely need to concentrate on this integral first. And then after we have that one, we can do the one on the outside, okay? So here in the inside, my, um, my inner, in, blah, 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 blah. My variable of integration is y, okay? So this is like a constant. So it'll be that constant times y, plus y squared over two. And then the bounds zero to six. And I'm gonna leave this stuff on the outside there. So then I get, um, remember the variable was y, so you're replacing the y's with these numbers. So this becomes x times six plus six squared over two um, minus, now I plug in zero, x times zero plus zero squared over two. So this is all just one big fat zero. And we end up with uh, zero to six x plus 36 over two is 18. And then if I integrate this with respect to x, we get six x squared over two plus 18x, zero to two, which is three x squared plus 18x from zero to two. So I get three times four plus 18 times two minus three times zero plus 18 times zero. This is all one big fat zero. So I end up with 12 plus 36, which is 48. Well, that's easy enough to type in. I hope it's correct. I didn't make no mistakes. The whole point of me doing these videos is to one, show you a way to do the problems, right? And two, also to show you that I am human, right? Um, I don't always know exactly what to do every single time. I just have to use my prior knowledge and build myself to get to this information. And I'm pretty sure y'all have heard me already say that it had been a while since I had taught this class. So there's that. Um, and math is very much you use it or lose it. So I don't always remember everything in this class, um, but I did know it at one point. So Norm, it's just like kind of like a refresher, right? Um, to make sure that we're still on par with all the information. And then I need to be able to say it or explain it in a way that, that you can understand, right? That's my point. That's my job as a teacher, okay? Um, but it does take a lot of effort on your part, just watching me and going, mm, that makes sense, that makes sense, that makes sense. I could do that, I could do that. But then actually getting into the trenches and doing it is different, right? Um, so you definitely have to practice. You can't just watch me do it and then just magically know how to do it. Um, you do have to, to, to work on that. So here's the inner one. So this guy is like a constant and then this one is the actual variable. So when I integrate that, I'm gonna have x squared times y. And then here I'm gonna have y cubed over three. And then my bounds negative two to two. So then let's see, that means when I plug in two, I'm gonna have, uh, remember you're plugging two for the old variable. So for, for y. So y is gonna become this two and this negative two, okay? So those are gonna get plugged in for y. So this is gonna become two x squared minus two cubed is eight over three. And then negative two times x squared. And then negative two cubed is actually a negative eight. So this becomes plus, which means I have four x squared. And um, negative, negative, negative is actually a minus. So I have a negative and another negative, which means I have negative 16 over three. 
And then now I can integrate with respect to x. So this is 4x squared over 3 minus 16x over 3 from negative 1 to 1. So when we plug in 1, that's just 4 thirds and then 16 over 3. And when I plug in negative 1, that's going to be a positive 1 times 4. So still a 4 thirds. But a negative 1 times a negative 16 is going to give me positive 16 over 3. So then 4 thirds minus 4 thirds will cancel. But negative 16 over 3 minus 16 over 3 is negative 32 over 3, which I don't think can be reduced. So let's try that. I have a feeling this one's wrong. Yep. It's wrong. I kind of knew. I'm trying to think, where did I go wrong? Maybe you already see it as I was going, but that's my constant. So y that is not a constant. So it's y cubed over three. Let me make sure all my bounds are correct. Yep, yep, yep. So then we plugged in the two. We got two x squared minus eight over three. Subtraction negative two times that negative two cubed is negative eight over three. So this guy and a plus that guy, and then a negative and a negative. Oh, I see my mistake. I put x squared and this should have been x cubed when I integrated it. I put the correct number down here, <laughs> but for some reason I didn't put the correct number there. Okay, it's only gonna change one number, okay? So when I plug in the positive one, this is still a positive four. But when I plug in the negative one, this is going to be a negative one times four, which is a negative four. So what does that mean? That means that this double negative is going to add these together. So they don't cancel. I get eight thirds. And then these do get subtracted, both of them. So minus 32 over three. And then what is eight minus 32? What does my calculator keep missing? I get negative 24 over three, which is just negative eight. So let's try that one. I had a feeling because it was saying enter an exact number and it really wasn't wanting a fraction. So I thought maybe, maybe the fraction is not correct. And, and sure enough, it wasn't. Okay, so my bad, my bad, my bad. Tiny little errors, right? They can be frustrating, but most of the time it's just something so small. Not like number six. Number six, I just totally messed up. I just wasn't, I didn't do the substitution right. And then I was going and trying to do it and I was like, well, that's not working either. So it happens. Some problems are more complicated than others. But I create these videos because not everybody is gonna remember all of the integration rules and I mean, I teach either Cal 1 or Cal 2 every semester. So um, Cal 3 is one of the ones that just hardly ever makes. And so when it does, they kind of rotate us through who's going to teach the Cal 3. And so sometimes I don't get a Cal 3 for like a while, like five years a while. Okay. Um, and so when that happens, I get a little rusty in my Cal 3, which makes me more, um, what is the word? Like not confident. I can't think of discouraged, maybe. Um, it just makes me worried <laughs> when I'm going to teach. I have to make sure that everything is like thorough and I am like solid before I go and, and teach it. So let's see here. Um, we're integrating with respect to x on this one. So that means that I need to integrate x squared. So this is going to become x cubed over three. And then this will act like a whole constant. So it'll just be two y squared times x. Now I've been told by my peers, my coworkers, my colleagues, that um, I should never admit that I'm rusty on something. But I mean, I think it's important because we're not perfect, right? No one is. So I think it makes people feel a little more comfortable when they know what's going on behind the scenes. Um, and so you're not, you know, spazzing yourself out. 
<laughs> thinking that you're supposed to be perfect. No, we're all human. We just work with what we got and we keep trying, right? Um, okay, so I'm gonna plug in four. And I remember my inner my variable of integration was x. So these guys are x's. Okay. So I'm going to try to plug in four for x, and I get four to the third power. That's 64. And then 2y squared times 4 is going to be 8y squared. And then when I plug in 0, I get 0 cubed over 3, or just 0. And then here, when I plug in 0, again, I'm going to get 0, right? 0 times anything is still 0. So this is all just one giant 0. So really, all I'm integrating is 64 over 3 and minus 8y squared. So let's go for it. 64 over 3, you cannot see my paper. Um, y minus 8y cubed over 3 from 1 to 2. So we will get, when I plug in 2, that's going to be 128 over 3 minus 8 times 8, which is 64 over 3. Now when I plug in 1, I'm going to get 64 over 3. And then 1 cubed is 1, so this is minus 8 over 3. Some people use the calculator. I, I don't. I, I usually just use it at the very, very end. So look, you have 128 over 3 minus 64 over 3 minus 64 over 3. That's basically 0. So all of those cancel. But then this negative times this negative is going to give me a positive 8 over 3. So let's see, because it says enter a fraction. OK, this one does tell me about um, the fraction. Yay, we've got to check. OK, so let's try number 10. We have three, five, one squared of x, two y e to the negative x, dy dx. This one's interesting. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna first block off my stuff so I know which one to do first. And y is my variable. So I'm going to say 2e to the negative x is like the constant then. And the integral of y is y squared over 2. Now remember, my variable of integration was y. So the y is going to get replaced by these two values. So we end up with, and I can pull this constant out actually. And I don't even have to worry about it when I do the evaluation. OK, so when I plug in the square root of x, this is going to be the square root of x squared over 2 minus when I plug in 1, that's 1 squared over 2. So we have 2e to the negative x, and then the square, that's just going to be x over 2 minus 1 over 2. And if I factor out the 1 half, right, there would be a 1 half here, and then these would be gone that one half is gonna reduce with that too. And so really I'm just gonna have X minus one. Now this one is gonna require me to use by parts, okay? And if anything has X's in it, you wanna use that as your U and then the other more complicated part is your B. So I'm gonna come off to the side and I'm gonna say let U equal um, X minus one let uh, dv equal e to the negative x uh, dx. And so then to find du, derivative of this is just 1 dx or just dx. And then over here, we actually have to take the integral of both sides so that I could figure out what v is. And the integral of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. Okay, you don't need to put the plus C here because we're going to put it when we apply the by parts formula. Okay, so the by parts formula is UV minus the integral of V DU. 
So let's put in all of our pieces. We get x minus one times v, which is negative e to the negative x, minus v, negative e to the negative x, and then du, which is just dx, okay? And then let's clean this up. So we have um, negative x e to the negative x, negative and negative will be positive e to the negative x, negative and negative is positive integral of e to the negative x. And we've already done that integral, so we know that result. You just get negative e to the negative x, and then your plus c, because we finally finished up all the integration, okay? We have one positive and one negative, so those are gonna cancel. So you just end up with negative x e to the negative x plus c, okay? Oh, I'm supposed to be plugging in five and three. No plus C, right? <laughs> bad, 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 bad. I have these bounds over here, right? I had these bounds that I needed to plug in. So after I've done all my integration, I can plug in those bounds, okay? Now I did simplify, right? Because those are gonna cancel. So we actually only need to plug in the five and the three into this expression, okay? This one's a good one. Um, and by good, I mean pretty crazy. Now minus negative three e to the negative three. So that's going to turn into a plus. So negative five e to the negative five plus three e to the negative three. And we can type it in like that. Unless I just want no one symbols. Okay, cool. Five e raised to the negative five plus three e raised to the negative three. Okay, fingers crossed I didn't make any mistakes. I normally do, so we'll see. Yeah, I didn't make any mistakes, awesome. Okay, I just got happy. Now, how many more problems are there? Oh, not too many, it's just, it looked like it was long because of the graphs. I was like, what, I'm only halfway? Okay. Oh, this one's good. Okay. So this one is a little bit more complicated. I am trying to um, figure out what the bounds would have to be. Okay. Now, notice that they have this. Okay. So they have zero and then an empty box and then a zero and an empty box and they have dy dx. Okay. So they don't have a box in here, which means I don't have a function that I need to integrate. So I'm basically just figuring out where the bounds are. Remember, you're looking at it like this. This guy first, and then that guy last. So um, this dy guy, um, the bounds for y, if you look at the graph, the bounds for y is from 0 to this y value, which is 7. So my bound should be from 0 to 7. And then the bounds for x would be from 0 to this x value, which is 8. Okay, now we know that the answer of a double integral is going to be the area. And since that box is um, seven units up by eight units over, I already know that the area is going to be the length times the width, which is 56. So I do know that the answer is going to be 56 just because I know how to take the area of that shape. But I'm going to do the actual integration just to verify that we get the same thing. Okay. So if you integrate this, you're just going to end up with um, y evaluated at 0 and 7, which means you're just going to end up with 7 dx. And when you integrate that with respect to x, you get 7x and then evaluate from 0 to 8, which is going to give you that 56 minus 0, or just 56, OK? So again, we can do it using our um, geometry, right? But I also did it using the calculus. So this one, this one's a little bit more complicated, y'all, but we'll see what it, what it is. And then dy dx. And this one's not a basic shape, so I cannot use geometry to figure out this area, okay? Um, but Let's look at it like this and let's see. 
what's happening to the y's? The y's are going from zero to this graph. So we need to know the equation of that graph. And it looks like a parabola that is still centered in the middle, but it's going downward and it's going up four. So you really have to recall your information about um, parabolas. So remember, the standard formula is gonna be um, negative ax minus h squared plus k. Okay, not negative a, it's just a. But in this case, I know my a is negative and it doesn't look like it's anything crazy, right? When I go down one, I go over one, yeah. So it's, I don't have a multiplier here. And then my H is the X value of the vertex. And the X value of that is zero. And then my K is a positive four. So this is actually negative X squared plus four, okay? You could probably also recognize that if you use the transformations of X squared. It flips over um, downward, right? Over the X axis, so that puts a negative here and then it goes up four. And so that puts a plus four. So regardless, if you're using your quadratic um, standard form and deciphering it from there, or whether you're using your transformations, you should be able to look at a graph and a, uh, a quadratic graph and find the equation of that quadratic. I mean, that was, what we, that was the whole point of college algebra, okay? Was to be able to do that. So this is gonna be negative X squared plus four. Now, the X's though, so I know the Y's are going from here to here. Then now imagine rectangles from here to here, a whole bunch of little rectangles, right? A whole bunch of them, little ones, little ones, little ones, little ones, little ones. Those rectangles go from where to where. Those rectangles are gonna start from zero and go all the way to two. So that means my bound here is gonna be from zero to two. And I really should have done this in red because that's part of the answer. And then now to actually integrate it, um, the integral of dy is just y. And then when you plug this in, you plug in zero, you're just gonna get negative x squared plus four. And this looks more like the integration that we would have done in the past, right? Um, but let's go ahead and find this value. So negative x cubed over three plus four x, and then evaluate it from zero to two. So we get um, negative eight over three plus eight minus zero over three plus zero. So this is a big fat zero. Um, negative eight over three plus eight is actually 16 over three, I believe. Let me double check, negative eight over three plus eight. Yes, is 16 over three. So here it would be two. Here it would be negative x to the power two plus four. And here it would be um, 16 over three. And we got all of our checks. So let's keep going. Okay, so number 13. Um, this one says, use an integrated integral to find the area of the region bounded by these graphs. Just FYI, I do not like to guess. And I, I get a lot of students that love guessing. And sometimes you're right and sometimes they're wrong. And they're like, hey, if I'm right half the time, it's good enough. Okay, so I personally have to graph this. Okay, and in order for me to graph that, the first thing I want to do is I want to find points of intersection because that's going to help me determine the region that's bounded by these two graphs. Okay, so in order to do that, if y is equal to x to the third three halves power and y is also equal to 4x, then that means the three halves x to the three halves and four x should be equivalent to each other since they're both equivalent to y, right? So if I factor this, um, it's gonna be x to the three halves minus four x equal to zero. Then if I factor out an x, I get x to the one half minus four. So I get x equal to zero and x equal, 
or one half x equal to four. And so then if I square both sides, I get x equals 16. So supposedly on my graph um, at 16 is where they're going to be equivalent. Let's double check that. What is 16 raised to the three halves? It's 64. So that would be the point there. And what is 4 times 16? It's also 64. So it makes sense. They're going to have the same point. 0 to the 3 has power is 0, and 4 times 0 is 0. So they have those two same points. But I'm going to go somewhere in the middle to figure out where, how the rest of the graph is going to go. Okay. So when x is equal to 8, what is 8 raised to the 3 halves? Oops. It's this number, 22 point something. So um, that would be 32. That would be 16. So somewhere in the middle there is this value. Okay. And so x to the 3 halves looks kind of like this. Again, I'm trying to draw this, but it's a curve, OK? Now when I plug in 8 into the other function, I'm going to get 32, which means it's a little bit higher. And this is a straight line. I can't draw, but 4x is a straight line, OK? So this is y equals 4x, and this is y equals x to the 3 halves. One of them should be straight, although I know the top one does not look straight. Um, so when you're drawing your little rectangles in here, okay, let's see what they have here. So they say that they're going to get zero in a box, x to the three halves, and then they're doing dy dx. Again, I like to do this. So they're talking about the y values first. The y goes from here to here. The y value down there is whatever I get by that function, which explains why this is at the bottom. And then it goes all the way up here, which is 4x. OK. Then these little rectangles are going to span all the way through here. So they start here when x is 0, and they stop when I get up there where x is 16. And so I have this. So this should be 16. And then this should be 4x. And over here, I got to actually do all this computation. So bear with me. Let me try to figure this out real quick. Um, we're going to get y, which means we're going to get um, 4x minus x to the 3 halves. And so then we're going to get 4x squared over 2, or just 2x squared minus x to the 5 halves over 5 halves. I'm going to clean this up. That's 2x squared. And then if I flip this over, it's going to be minus 2 fifths x to the 5 halves. So when I plug in 16, what is 16 times 16 times 2? So I can do that one. I get 5, 1, 2 minus um, 16 raised to the 5 over, oh shoot, now I'm going to plug 16 into there. So 2 fifths 16 raised to the 5 over 2. I get this ugly number. So 2, 0, 4, 8 over 5. And then now when I plug in 0, I'm going to get 0 minus 0, so it's a big fat 0. So what on earth is 512 minus this thing? I get 512 over 3. So let's try it out. 512 over 3. Hopefully that's all good. Oh, no, I did not get something right. That's not right. So let me double check. We did the 16. We did the 4x, this guy, this guy. So we did the integral of y. We got 4x and that. Then when I integrated that, I got 4x squared over 2, which is this guy. 
And if I add one to this exponent, I get five over two, divide by that exponent, but I gotta flip this over. Hmm. Why did I not get this correct? So when I plug in 16, two parentheses 16 squared is 512. Oh, I think I know what I did. I typed in the wrong denominator. Look at my calculator. It says 512 over 5. Hello. And I typed in 512 over 3. I'm telling you, sometimes it's the silliest things. Um, you, it makes you doubt like your whole work. I'm like going all the way back to the beginning. What did I do wrong? And it was just me having not even a dyslexic moment. That was, I don't even know what that was. I just wrote down the wrong number. Okay, let's try this one. So this one already has the integral. They just need me to tell them the bounds, okay? So um, I'm going from the square root of um, y, which looks like this, okay? And then I'm going to two. So it looks like that. The y value is going from square root to two. And then the x values should be, oh, this is backwards. Look, 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 look. It's dx first. So x has to go from this to this. Hmm. Ah, this, this one then. This one's facing the correct way like that one is. That's the square root of y. So actually, no, it's not. This one's tricky. I'm going to write it down. Very, very, very tricky. Very tricky. So remember, this is on the inside. So these are x values, okay? So you have x equal to 2, and you have x equal to the square root of y. We're not used to seeing functions written like that. We're used to having y all by itself. So if I square both sides, I will get that y is x squared. So it's not going this way. That's the square root of x goes that way, right? Um, at y squared, or I'm sorry, x squared is just going like this, okay? So that's the graph of x squared. And I'm supposed to be going from this x value, from all the x values on this line to two. Well, if that's the case, what is that? That point is gonna be two comma four, right? When you square two, you get four. Um, and then of course you have this point here, which is zero, zero. So it makes sense because the Y values would be going from zero to four, zero to four. That makes sense for those Y values. And then the X values would be going from this line to two. So this is the region that they're talking about. And there's only one graph in there that is talking about that region and it's this one, okay? Um, and then it says switch the order of integration. So same image, but I don't want to do it in this order. I want to do it in the y first and then dx. Okay. So if we want to switch it, then I need to know what y equals. So if I'm talking about the y's, that means from the bottom to the top and then span them across. Okay. So the bottom is actually y equals zero, and the top is this y equals x squared. Now let me put this in red because those are actually the answers. And then if you span those rectangles that are doing that across, it goes from zero to two for x. And so this would be zero to two, and this would be zero to x squared. Now let's, oh, I don't think I checked the right box. No. I did not check the right box. I was supposed to check that box, but I pressed submit before I could change my graph answer. Okay, now we got the check for the graph. I don't know why it always puts the check over here at the bottom right. Even if this was the correct answer, the check is still down there. Um, it's just the way the, the the web assign has been programmed, okay? 
Okay, is this the last one? Yes, it is. Got it. So what on earth is that? Oh, so this is the center and it's just a big circle all the way around. But notice that the it's from five to five. No, a little bit past five. So from nine to negative nine to nine and then negative nine to nine. Hmm. I don't understand why there's an error on this. Why can't I get back over there? Oh, there we go. Okay, let's see. I need another paper for this one. For sure. So for number 15, the integral is from negative nine to nine. And then from zero to the square root of 81 minus x squared. And then f of xy dy dx. Now we know that this is, um, when you have plus or minus, that's a whole circle, okay? But when you just have the positive, that's only the positive half of the circle where the y values are positive. So what that means is, and, and notice that the center is nine. So negative nine over here, nine over there, and even nine here, and it's going like this. I can't draw, and of course, this does not look like a circle, but you get the idea, okay? That's the circle. That's the graph of this. And if my y values are going from zero to this, that means that my rectangles look like this, okay? And then you're gonna span those rectangles from negative nine to nine, which means that this whole region is the region that they're talking about. And that seems to be this one here. Not the whole circle, just the top half, okay? And it looks like this one would have been the bottom half. Now, um, but to change the, um, the things of integration, that's gonna be a little bit tricky. So that means I need to go from X, I need to go this way. So this one's gonna be pretty difficult, okay? So let's see, we know that up here, we knew that y equaled this. And if I wanna solve for x here, right? So I can go from here to here. If I wanna solve for x here, I'm gonna have to take the square root or square both sides. So when I square both sides, I'm gonna get y squared. I'm gonna erase this because I need some more space. And then 81 minus x squared. And then if I minus the 81, I get negative x squared. And then if I divide everybody by a negative, I get positive squ uh, x squared, which can be written like this. And then if I take the square root, I get plus or minus the square root of 81 minus y squared equal to x, okay? Now this is the full circle, okay? Because the positive, when the x's are positive, is going to be this part of the graph where the x's are positive. And then where the x's are negative, it's going to be this half of the graph. Again, bear with me, I cannot draw. Does not look like a circle, but whatever. Circle-ish <laughs> is good enough, okay? Looks more like a lemon, but anyway. Um, so this is for x. Now, that's great, okay? So remember, this is for the positive square root of 81 minus y squared, and this is for the negative square root of 81 minus y squared. So where is the x is going if I switch the integration? Right, we're doing instead of dy first and then dx, we're doing it the other way. So where's these x's going? They're going from here on the left to there on the right. And you always go left to right, bottom to top, always, okay? So my rectangles are gonna go from left to right, which means I'm gonna have this is my lower bound and then the positive as my upper bound. And then these rectangles Remember, I'm only talking about this shaded region. I'm not talking about the region down here. 
So these rectangles are going to go from zero all the way up to nine for y. So that's zero to nine. So this should be nine and this should be the positive square root of 81 minus y squared. And then you can submit and hopefully that is correct. And if it is, we're all done with this particular section. So yay, double, triple checks. Awesome. So we should have a hundred. Yes. Okay. Well, that is the end of this one and I will see you in the next video.